Reverend Philip Stubbs, Madam Chairperson, our distinguished board members, our esteemed emeritus, long-serving members of the St. Michael's Methodist Church co community, and our new viewers, good morning and welcome. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our service of appreciation of our deserving fathers at St. Michael's Methodist Church and all over the world. On this Father's Day, we acknowledge those fathers who are exceptionally committed to their families. Their work dreams for a long-term dedication to their children have not gone unnoticed. We thank God that they remain committed to a full-time and never-ending job, which is being a father. I believe that even our mothers can agree that a father's shoes are hard to fill. A father is a consistent and a persistent leader, provider, protector, role model, mentor, and a man of God. Let's not forget that they are part-time technicians, plumbers, builders, mechanics, and the list goes on. They are so many different things to those they care for. In tribute to our fathers and father figures, the Men's Fellowship under the presidency of Mr. Lavardi DeVoe has prepared this service to simply remind fathers who are watching with us today that your influence is God ordained. In your very own way, you are special to how we are brought up, how we feel God's love on earth, and how we see the world. As we venture through our service this morning, we have made time to hear special greetings from our Men's Fellowship President and Men's Fellowship Ensemble here at St. Michael's Methodist Church. It is our hope that this service and everything beyond it is more than you would have expected this Father's Day to be. Our Father and our God, we come before you today thanking you for the example um, that you have given to us for fathers. We have made many mistakes, so we ask your forgiveness. Continue to empower us on our churches and organizations who invest in fatherhood. We pray for the fathers of the nation, that they may be guided by you, so that they may lead us aright. We pray for the single fathers, provide them with wisdom, strength, and courage in whatever situation they may find themselves in. We pray for fathers who have left the church. Show them the way back. Their family needs them. Their church needs them. Heal their hurts. On this special day set aside to honor fathers, give them the passion to serve you, so that in the end, the words, well done, can be said. And now, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
If it's alright with you, Dad Here's a little song for you, Dad It's really just a new Way to express, Dad Especially today, my Dad My name is Demi Lafage the and my dad's name is Damaris just a Cash way to I like it when he's happy best. I like it I when we play Scrabble together I'm Happy Father's Day to my dad and to all the In fathers heart, the I hope you know it's true. I'm really, really thankful for Hi, you. my name yeah. is Jonathan really Marsh. Really Hi, my name is Dallas Marsh. And I'm our father is, is Kendrick Marsh. Marsh. To I love that he dad. helps me Thanks for with everything. new things. I love that he dad. helps me with my work. So here's the deal, Dad. My favorite thing to yeah, do with my deal, father dad. is to Come play board games. My favorite thing you. to do with my father is going to the pool. I'm really grateful for your love. We Happy your Father's home. Day you know to all really fathers really of St. Yeah. Yeah. Michael's really Methodist Church. Soon the song is ending, but I'm hoping that it's sending you a smile for a while, cause that's all I've been intending. The point from the beginning of these rhymes that I've been spending is to lead up to this ending, in my heart you're always trending. Dad, you're always there for me, Dad. You always care for me, Dad. You're always fair to me, more or less, Dad. I know every day, Dad. You go out of your way, Dad. To make sure I'm okay, you're the best I know I don't say it enough I'm really grateful for your love In your Happy Father's Day To my good father who has inspired us because of how hard working And independent he is An attribute that I want to replicate from my grandfather is How strong minded he is And the unconditional love he shows to his loved ones Happy Father's Day to all the St. Michael's fathers Hope you have a blessed Father's Day I'm really, really thankful for you, Dad. I'm really, really thankful for you. Hi, my name is Tamia Bean, and my dad's name is Tamia Bean. And what I love about it is that he's hardworking. He buys me ice cream, and he kisses me every night before bed. And what I love to say is, Happy Father's Day to my dad, and Happy Father's Day to all the dads in St. Michael. He shows you what love is, saw your dreams before you did. He'll give everything. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in St. Michael. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there being providers and protectors to their families. It's definitely needed in today's society. I'd like to say happy Father's Day to my father, Clayton King. It's definitely been an inspiration in my life, showing me and giving me the freedom to be my own individual, helping me to mature over you know this past 21 years. He's really appreciated by me and my family, and we can't thank him enough. He displays you know tons of selflessness um, throughout the years. He has made sacrifices for us that he didn't have for himself, creating opportunities for me and my siblings. And you know, it goes without saying that we love you. You know, a moment never goes by when I'm not happy to say that, you know, he's my father, he's my dad. Love you. Hi, my name is Shay Stubbs, and I just want to say a special happy Father's Day to my dad, Philip Stubbs. Um, one of the many ways he inspires me is just to be a little bit more understanding um, with people and situations on an everyday basis. Uh, in my opinion, his best attributes are his patience and kindness, and they're definitely traits that I hope to um, replicate today or in, in the near future. Um, I think I've been most proud of him recently and just how he's navigated the entire coronavirus thing. Um, I think he's done a great job at putting uh, the community, the church, and even our family first in a very trying and confusing time. So happy Father's Day, Dad, and to all of the fathers in St. Michael's. To the men of St. Michael's, today we celebrate you. Thank you for your patience, kindness, and strength displayed each day. The pillars who never look for praise, never want to boast, but the figures who quietly work so hard for those you love the most. Thank you for always being a sturdy hand to hold, for being role models and superheroes who've taught us how to be strong and confident in all we do. 
for the countless other things that often go unnoticed. Today, with gratitude, we wish you a happy Father's Day. Please to bring brief remarks on behalf of the Men's Fellowship in commemoration of this year's Father's Day. Let me first recognize the mothers, for without them there would be no fathers. Mothers, on behalf of all the sons and fathers gathered, please accept our thanks and enduring gratitude for bearing and rearing us. I want to use the example of my father to make my point about fatherhood. Daddy was a, more, a man alone at 13, for his father had died. By 16, he was a boat captain, and by 21 or 22, he was married to the love of his life, Alice, our mother. He and his brother owned their own vessel a two-mile schooner named the Elector. Daddy was unschooled, but a highly educated man. His example of being a father to his girls and so empowering them to be all that they could be set him apart. When I and my brothers came along much later, 
He could mold us into men. Work, character, honesty, discipline, love, protection, freedom, and taking care of each other were our enduring lessons. He taught by the example of his life and the spoken words he shared. Daddy did not believe in hitting his children. He taught discipline by showing disappointment in bad behavior. He gave us freely of his dignity, of his dingy boat, so that we learned early to sail, fish, and provide. He taught each of us his skill to enable us to learn to provide. He showed through his love of mama and his girls how to respect women. Daddy was a man. To all the fathers, expected fathers, grandfathers, and those still striving to become fathers, happy and helpful Father's Day. Be blessed. Thank you. When God created man and woman, he said that it was good and made them in his own image and likeness. Today we honor all of our fathers, grandfathers, and all the men who fill such important roles in the lives of our families and our church. Fathers, we salute you. We want you to know how important you are to us. Fathers, you are your son's first hero and your daughter's first love. A father's love for his children is never ending, and a good father is always there. He helps shape his children's childhood and guide them through life. What an awesome responsibility, an incredible gift, and a special privilege. Fathers, you are the pillows that keep your family standing whose love and care we often fail to recognize. Thank you for all the time and commitment that you put into your families every single day. On behalf of the Ladies' Ministry, Happy Father's Day. We love you. taken from Ephesians chapter 6 one, verses 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, 
which is the first commandment with with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth fathers do not exasperate your children instead bring them up in the training and instructions of the lord this is the word this is the word of the lord the gospel reading is taken from mark chapter 5 verses 21 through 24 now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and the great multitude followed him and thronged him. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Day. It's a special day for family circles all over the globe. And from this place in Michael's Methodist Church, we share good news. And on this Father's Day, we wish every father in our church family, in the Bahamas and around the globe, a special happy Father's Day. I pray that on this day, we will have circles of honor and celebration as we affirm, as we celebrate and salute the fathers in our lives. 
as we recall those fathers who have lived and poured their lives into us and now they are reposed in sacred memory. May each of us and all of us in our family circles have meaningful times of celebration. This is a good news pulpit. St. Michael's Methodist Church is a good news church family. And so we lift up good news on this blessed Sunday as we affirm and as we celebrate the fathers in our lives. Of course, we turn to scripture. As Holy Scripture is the foundation of our lives, we get light, we get nourishment, we commune with God, we grow spiritually as we receive the word of God, as we make it a part of our lives. We thank God for this opportunity to share on this Father's Day. And throughout Scripture, we see the paramount function of the family and of fathers and mothers, of parents. We see in our patriarchs from Holy Scripture, Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, Moses, and the patriarchs throughout how primary they were in their family lives and in the house of Israel. Indeed, we see in the New Testament our blessed Savior being born and placed with Joseph, his earthly father, and Mary, his mother, and raised by them his personality formed by them, nurtured his social life, guided by a father. The Joseph the carpenter, who was our blessed Savior's model for fatherhood during his earthly sojourn. And so fathers and mothers and family are paramount in all of Scripture. We see this from the life of our Lord, from his beginnings in Bethlehem as he depended on the wisdom and security of Joseph. We see this throughout the Gospels and indeed throughout the pastoral epistles. Indeed, in the pastoral epistles, without fail, there is a listing of instructions to the family. It is as if the pastoral epistles echo, indeed they do echo, and are connected with that first family where God by design, not by coincidence, not by happenstance, but God by design created the family and our first parents, Adam and Eve, were present in the garden, and God blessed them as that first family. God blessed them as that first married couple and said, this is good. And so it's no surprise, indeed it is filled with sacred intention, that in all of scripture, there's a paramount place for the family and for fathers and mothers and parents. And on this Father's Day, we affirm and celebrate fatherhood and fathers. And so to all fathers in the Bahamas, we say once more, and we are intentionally redundant on this Father's Day, we say to you, happy Father's Day. May this be a day that in which you experience honor and celebration and affirmation. May this be a day in which those of us with fathers who have gone on into eternity, we recall their memories. We recall the time spent with them, and as we recall the time spent with them, we experience the life-giving thrust into our lives. 
We experience how their memories as a template in our minds still inform the best of our living. And so I'll say it again, happy Father's Day. And you will hear that phrase from me from this pulpit of good news on this Father's Day as I try to get into technology and beyond the machines into your consciousness and celebrate the nature of fatherhood and what it means to be a father. Happy Father's Day to you. Today our thoughts are organized along the subject of three things good fathers do always. This subject organizes our thoughts and the principles that we will lift up. And of course, in preaching and teaching in a spiritual context, preaching and teaching spiritually, uh, the sharing of God's word has to do with sharing so that we might receive God's word and make it a part of our lives. Three things that good fathers do. First, good fathers, based on the list, present in Ephesians chapter 6 and in the pastoral epistles, uh, we're told that good fathers train their children. And so we begin with this first principle. Good fathers always prepare their children. Good fathers prepare their children for life prepare their children in terms of the spiritual connection, in terms of values, in terms of how to be a social being, in terms of how to deal with law and order, how to deal with tasks before them. Good fathers always prepare their children. I'm a dad, I have four children, a son who lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and my three daughters are home and they are in transition, moving to and from our university. Um, and as a father, I'm concerned with preparing them for life. I know that when we have repairs around the house, they always smile and ask me, Daddy, who are you going to call? Because they know where my strengths are and where my weaknesses are. In recent years, we have been asking one of our young adults, his uh, work and major has to do with IT and computers, uh, but he is a person who understands how to repair things around a house, how to repair um, things related to computers. Uh, Ricky Pears Jr., one of our young adults from church, we would ask him to come by, and I recall Ricky came by once, and Ricky opened up his tools, his toolkit. And I looked at them, and they were such a premium set of tools. They looked like surgical instruments. That is the kind of quality tools that Ricky had. And in a very measured way, he assessed the repairs that needed to be done and said, listen, it's going to take me about an hour. And he went ahead and did it, and the repair was just fine. I mention Ricky here under this rubric of preparation because he's Ricky Pears Jr. I know that Ricky Pears Jr. is able to use those wonderful tools. Some of the tools are, I don't even know their names, but he knows every tool and he knows what every tool is designed for. Ricky Pears Jr. is able to use those tools because I've seen him with Ricardo Pez Sr., his dad. And I know that his dad has helped him to understand the value of being able to operate around the house, the value of being able to repair this and that, and even more than that. I've seen Ricky Pez Jr. and his dad, Ricardo Pez Sr., and I've seen how his dad has modeled a certain approach to life that goes beyond the tools. 
to ethics, to how you behave, to manners, to how you treat people. That father, Ricky Ricardo Perez Sr., has helped to prepare Rick, Ricky Perez Jr. And I see this throughout the church family here at St. Michael's. And so we begin with this note. Good fathers always prepare their children for living, for life, for a spiritual connection with God, for uh, embrace of values like industry and honesty and uh, truth-telling and respect of others. Prepare them to deal well with other human beings. Secondly, we want to appreciate what is written by Paul in Ephesians chapter 6. He gives this word about what fathers are not to do. And he speaks directly and plainly like a surgeon going with a focus on a particular area of life. Paul writes, fathers are not to exasperate their children. Another rendering has it this way, fathers are not to provoke their children. And so on this Father's Day, as we say happy Father's Day to fathers, as we affirm what good fathers do, we want to say very plainly in alignment with Scripture, here is what good fathers are careful not to do. Good fathers don't provoke their children. Good fathers do not exasperate their children. Don't frustrate their children. What Holy Scripture, through the uh, writing of the Apostle Paul, says to us in Ephesians chapter 6 is this. Good fathers never burden their children. Good fathers are not an, a minus to their children. Good fathers do not take away life from their children. May we remember that on this day, and may we see it not only as a rebuke or a warning or as a caution to current fathers and new fathers and fathers-to-be, but may we see it as an invitation to be about all that is good, just as God, our Heavenly Father, created and creates that which is good Paul writes very carefully, very pointedly, and declares that good fathers are not to exasperate their children, not to frustrate them. Instead, join to preparation, sisters and brothers of faith, people of goodwill everywhere, good fathers praise their children. Good fathers praise their children always. An adult man sits down at his chair as an executive and he still can hear his father's voice saying, you are an intelligent child. You will do well. And that praise offered in childhood becomes fuel for that young man. And that young man is propelled into a life of academic excellence and professional fulfillment. Words are so important from a father when it comes to praise. It is so true, the proverb from Holy Scripture, the power of life and death. Uh, is in the tongue, and those who eat of the fruit thereof will either live or die. Words are important, and good fathers always find those moments when they praise their children, when they say to the young girl, you are a princess, I value you. 
And that young girl who, as a princess, gets a little princess costume, and the costume fades away after one season of celebration, but the words from her father, those words remain with her, and those words become the structure for her value as a young girl, as a young lady, as a young woman, and the praise helps to protect her even when shadows would creep upon her substance and her self. Praise is so important. And as we say Happy Father's Day, as we affirm three things that fathers always do, good fathers prepare their children for life. Good fathers always praise their children. And words are so important here. And friends, remember the instruction of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time to talk and there's a time to be quiet and a good father knows what time it is when it comes to silence and to words for his or her child. I cannot be more specific than that. You know your child. You know your child's orientation. But hear me on this Father's Day. When a child needs words of praise and a father is silent, that is cruel. And that produces dysfunction. And when a child should be called into account, and should feel the dearth and burden of a father's silence, the disapproval to some act, some behavior, and instead the child gets praises. That is also cruel and dysfunctional. And that kind of praise, when it is inappropriate, creates a dysfunction in a child that produces a spoiled child. In this summer season, as the mangoes flow into our hands from our trees, we all are happy to eat a ripe and good mango. No one wants to eat a rotten, spoiled mango. And creation does not want to be nourished by a spoiled child. And so, fathers, as we say Happy Father's Day to you, I pray that you will know the difference between the moment that calls for words of praise and the moment that calls for silence. A good father knows the difference. And finally, to add to a good father prepares. Secondly, a good father praises. A good father is present. And we see this in the gospel reading. Where Jairus, the ruler, someone with a full schedule, he was present in his home. He knew what was going on. He knew the status of his daughter's health. And when she became ill... Jairus knew because he was present. I celebrate fathers who are married to the mothers of their children. Married fathers, I celebrate you and your presence in the home. This is a design approved by scripture. I celebrate that even as you are present and you are participating and you are involved in your home. What a wonderful standard you're lifting up. And fathers who are not married, but still you work through the logistics of not being married and you are present with your children. I celebrate that. Good fathers are always present. Jairus knew the status of his daughter because he was present in the home. He knew the status of his daughter's health 
because he was there. He had knowledge of what was going on. He was a leader, a manager, an executive with a full schedule, but his schedule was not so full that he did not understand the realities and the routine of his household. That's a good father. He understood the status of his daughter and he understood his limits and so he went and looked for the source of life, our blessed Savior Jesus to Christ. He went looking for that rabbi from Nazareth. He went looking for that one who was the common Nazarene with the uncommon nature he expended his energies. He suspended his work routine. That's what a good father does. He was present. He went looking for help for his daughter. Often when I drop my, one of my daughters off, I would say to them, I can get you in seven minutes. And what I'm saying to them is this, whether it's seven minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I would say to them, if anything happens and you need me, call me and I'll pick you up because I understand that I am a part of that first level of response as a father and a part of fatherhood is being present. And so on this Father's Day, as we say Happy Father's Day, oh, we celebrate the fathers who prepare their children, who praise their children, and who are present with their children. Jairus is with our blessed Savior, and they get the news that his daughter had died, and Jesus said to Jairus, let's still go and deal with this matter of death. And Jairus believes Jesus. And in the midst of those well-organized mourners, Jairus and Jesus and his inner circle of disciples are present with this father and this child who had died and the one who is resurrection and life in the home with this father says to his daughter, Jairus' daughter, Arise! And the girl comes back to life. When fathers are present, connected to Jesus, the source of life, they convey that source to their children. And so from St. Michael's Methodist Church, from this place of good news, from this sanctuary here in Chippingham in Nassau, Bahamas, established to honor God, established so that we might worship God from this church family. We are people of good news. And we say to you on this Father's Day, to every father, happy Father's Day. And we say to all in this moment of sharing, we say to all in this moment of sharing, may this day be filled with honor and celebration. May healing occur where healing needs to occur. May you bless fathers present before you and those reposed to sacred memory whose life is still with you. Amen. In this moment, we say happy birthday and happy anniversary to all of our members celebrating on this day. We thank God for each of you, and we uh, share in this moment of thanksgiving, and we give you support as we pray for you. As we move to pray for members of our church, we think of a dear brother and friend uh, from the Methodist communion, the late Dr. Patrick Roberts. We thank God for Dr. Roberts and for his life, for his journey as a person, for his vocation, his call to medicine that he answered, and for his professional journey 
that paralleled the building of this Bahamas as a nation. Uh, Dr. Patrick Roberts was a nation builder, whether through his personal life, through his office on Fort Charlotte, overlooking uh, the Independence Park, uh, wherever he went. A gentleman, a professional, a consummate practitioner of healing, we celebrate and affirm him in this moment, even as we pray for his dear widow, Mrs. Roberts, and his children, Rain and Patricia. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives, your presence in the world. With reverence, we thank you for being a good God, and for your hand of grace that we've seen in answered prayers in your presence with us. We bless your name. In this moment, we pray for members celebrating anniversaries and birthdays. Each one is special, O oh God. And as they celebrate today and this week, we pray that they might know of their specialness, we pray that each one celebrating might choose to become a fully devoted disciple of Christ. Lord, we pray for this each week because you are life. And apart from you, there is no life. Bless each one celebrating. Oh God, we pray with grace and wisdom and good health. We command our dear brother, your servant, Patrick Roberts, to your care. We pray for his wife and his daughters, for his family members, one and all. And we lift up all who are grieving in our church family, all who are stricken with grief connected to this moment. O oh God of all comfort, give, we pray, grace to all. We come to worship you because you are a good God and we are thankful. We bring to your house of worship, we bring to your storehouse our tithes and our offerings, a portion of our substance. We come cheerfully and out of generous hearts to present before your altar as stewards these material gifts. Bless, we pray, these tithes and offerings as you've done in the past. Use these gifts for your work in and through our church family. And we pray with reverence that you would join us to these gifts so that our time and talent and treasure, all of which come from your hand, might be used by you. We bless your name. It is our privilege to bless your name. We exclaim your goodness. We celebrate your majesty, O oh God, as we say hallelujah, 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 amen. Happy birthday to you, happy anniversary to you. We love you, St. Michael's, and we're praying for you. Happy birthday to you, happy anniversary to you. We love you, St. Michael's, and we're praying for you. This year, St. Michael's Methodist Church is celebrating an anniversary 
of the founding of the church in 1964. One of the founding members, Mr. Fred Neely, is still with us and we are privileged to have him. And so as we celebrate Father's Day this year, we're going to ask him to give some reflections on the founding of the church. And so, Brother Neely, uh, can you say what was the impetus for the founding of the church back in 1964? We were all members of the Grandstand Wesley and uh, the area of uh, Farrington Road and uh, Chippingham was ripe for ministry. And um, about 35 or 40 of us left the sanctity of uh, Grandstand, Wesley, and we started St. Michael's. Now, uh, shortly after, I take it that uh, the church uh, formed a men's fellowship. What are some of your earlier recollections of that? The men's fellowship, some of the uh, earlier members were A.B. Archer, Oman Poitier, Lloyd Williams was the first president, Gilbert Williams, Alfred Bellet, Carl Fisher, Lawrence Gibson, and James Markey was uh, the secretary, first secretary, Pedro Roberts, and yours truly for any. Now, some of these names I know, I recognize. Uh, and to me, they were all the people. But can you give some idea as to the age of the men at that time? Uh, I, I believe you were born in 1930, and we're talking about 1964. So that sounds like 30 to me. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would say it would be more in, in line there. So yeah. 30s, to, 30s yeah. to 40s, and then there were some 50s. So you had a range of younger and older men yes. who uh, took part in the men's fellowship. And uh, how was it? Were, were they older men? Were they uh, moderators? Were they uh, people who, who provided advice or were they just there? Yeah, they certainly were. Uh, they, they took um, on the leadership role. A.B. Archer was our first society short, then we used to call them. And, uh, as I forementioned, Lloyd Williams was the first president of the Men's Fellowship, and James Markey was his secretary. And uh, we had a fellowship meeting once a month, the first Tuesday in every month. And uh, we had a ministry at Salmon's um, Hospital, where we had held a service, a service once every month. Uh, on a Sunday morning after St. Michael's Church, we were full cars and we headed to Salmon's. Okay, so what were some of the other projects that you uh, participated in? Well, we, we uh, carried the gospel and songs throughout the island of New Providence. Uh, we visited uh, the Las Arena on occasion. Um, we sang in most of the established churches in, 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 in New Providence uh, on, on, on numerous occasions. We, we, we were a well sought out group. So to that end, we uh, bought some material, Oxford grain material, to make a uniform so that when we appear out, we were all uniform. I still have my, my suit at the same particular time. Okay, so Brother Neely, uh, your, those were outreach projects. Yes. Uh, tell us about work you did within the church. Well, we were responsible uh, for the uh, cleaning, getting, getting the grounds clean and the painting of all the buildings in the compound. We, uh, we paved the parking lot uh, that is by the sanctuary. Um, we um, 
establish a loan to purchase the, 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 the ABRT building uh, the, where the preschool is. Well, that was uh, a building up to a uh, foundation with the, the owners uh, uh, fell on hard times with the bank and it went up auction. We, some of us mortgage our home to uh, supply, support the bank loan and we, 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 we bought that. Uh, the Man Fellowship was responsible for, for having that foundation cut. The Man Fellowship was responsible for electric, electrifying the, 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 the top floor uh, and the plumbing. So now we are in 2020. So, Brother Neely, uh, what do you say to the men uh, who uh, continue to, to keep the men's fellowship going? I would say to them to hang in there and you sh be, be sure that your labor in the Lord will not be in vain. Remember, out, out of all the names I, I called, I am the only one alive now that started the Men Fellowship. Uh, and I am on my way out, so I would encourage the men to hang in because whatever you do to the Lord, you will not be doing it in vain. So you have to keep that ministry going. Good morning to Michaels. Um, we are here um, at the youth center. We are changing, replacing the shingles on the roof and replacing the rotting plywood in the boxing. Um, this is an effort that's um, spearhead, being spearheaded by the church and the men's fellowship. We are going down to the church to take out the old kitchen and the bathroom petitions. Often the preparation by fathers happens one-on-one, -on -one, where a father prepares the child. Sometimes it happens in groups. I'm thankful that here at St. Michael's Methodist Church, our men's fellowship as a group, they are present. And because they're present, they know of the needs. And they as a group are resourcing our young people by re uh, replacing, repairing the roof over the youth center. They are investing in the building, but the building is not the end. They're investing in the building because they want to build the lives of our young people to prepare them. So sometimes it's the father and the child, one by one. Sometimes it's a group. And the men's fellowship, they're doing that as a group here at St. Michael's.
On this day, on this Father's Day, we say Happy Father's Day to each father joined to this moment. We bless the memories of the fathers who have poured their lives into us, whose investment in us is still treasured. And now we look to God Almighty as we share in this benediction in this moment. Let us pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up the face of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. And on this day and always, may God give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>